she is a clinical fellow from the department of ophthalmic and facial plastic surgery in ocular oncology and she'll be talking on congenital lacrimal fistula i cut the road less traveled by so all to you mrithika you can start sharing your screen so mrithika so is a alumnus of rp center and now she is working as a fellow in center for sight hyderabad yes thank you uh, respected judges for giving me this opportunity to present our video on a congenital lacrimal fistula and uh, uh we'll be talking about the features and the management in juxtaposition uh, to the immortal lines by the poet robert frost <laughs> roads diverged in a yellow wood and sorry i could not travel both and be one travel so thought the little tear drop as it stood at the junction of the path it was meant to take and a new untouched fistula tract the nasolacrimal passage develops from the ectoderm in the nasooptic fissure from the 32nd day and canalization begins in the 60 day old embryo The origin of the congenital lacrimal fistula can be traced to either one of the canaliculi, the common canaliculus, lacrimal sac, or the nasolacrimal duct. In contrast to the more commonly encountered acquired lacrimal fistula, the congenital one has a smooth appearance with only clear fluid exuding from it. Most cases are unilateral and situated in feronasal to the medial canthus a fine probe runs up the tract backwards and medially but follows a slight curve posteriorly the length of the tract invariably measures out to be around 4 to 6 mm congenital lacrimal fistulae are frequently asymptomatic when the tear however does choose this path children present with epiphora from the fistula either spontaneously or on manipulating the area around diagnosis is based on clinical examination probing and irrigation the site of communication can be identified by determining where a lacrimal probe placed through fistula makes contact with probes introduced through the upper and lower canaliculi Various management modalities have been advocated including cauterization most cases can be treated successfully with simple excision of the whole of the fistulous tract adjunctive dacryocystorhinostomy and lacrimal intubation can be reserved for patients with associated abnormalities of lacrimal outflow tract as described thus Preoperative evaluation of the lacrimal drainage system is very important. Here we describe a simple closed excision of an uncomplicated congenital lacrimal fistula in a 3-year-old girl. A thin probe is guided through the fistula to trace its path. A crescentic incision is marked. A bath poker blade is used for cutting making a controlled curvilinear incision. The probe is a great help during superficial and deeper dissection. Spreading rather than cutting movements of a spring scissor around the delicate fistulous tract avoids unnecessary bleeding. Dissection is continued till anterior wall of sac covered by orbicularis is reached this appears as a widened out flask shaped area once the fistulous tract is seen to reach this and vanish underneath it we feel there is no need to dissect further and possibly jeopardize the vital structures like the canaliculus or the lacrimal sac the fistulous tract is cut after removing the probe to reveal a hole in the sac thus confirming its anomalous connection a single absorbable 60 vicral suture is sufficient to close the small defect in the sac histopathological examination of the vertical sections of the excised tract show transitional epithelium similar to the lacrimal sac 
the patient did very well with no visible blemish 3 months after the surgery this surgery if performed with patience and precision can achieve complete excision of the fistulous tract with good anatomic and functional outcome i shall be telling this but not with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence two roads diverged in a wood and i i cut the one less traveled by and that has made all the difference so gatika that's really different uh, wonderful presentation